Welcome everybody, my name is Lida Liberopoulou and this is the first video of a series about the historical aspects of Plague Tale Innocence and Plague Tale Requiem. The game developers have mentioned in interviews and promotional materials that they've done a lot of research on its 14th century historical backdrop. So if we put aside the many, many, many fantastical elements and creative narrative twists, how precise is the representation of historical facts in these games? As always, there will be major spoilers. You have been warned. Okay, let's go. First, let's start with some basic information about the games. Plague Tale Innocence, the first game in the series, is set in Aquitaine, France in 1348, during the Black Death and the Hundred Years' War between France and England. You play as Amicia, a teenage girl from the noble Derune family. Your brother Hugo possesses the unique power to control the plague due to a rare condition known as the Prima Macula, which makes him a target for the Inquisition. You both end up traveling through Aquitaine, seeking a cure for Hugo's condition. The game also puts Amicia and Hugo through some pretty grim situations that will bring them face to face with the harsh realities of that world. The sequel, Plague Tale Requiem, takes place six months later. Amicia, Hugo, their mother Beatrice and apprentice alchemist Lucas seek assistance from the Order, an ancient alchemist organization. En route to a city in Provence, they're ambushed. This activates Hugo's dormant prima macula and triggers a rat attack that spreads the Black Death. Amicia and Hugo then go to a mission to locate the Prima Macula's origin to find a lasting cure for Hugo. Both Innocence and Requiem draw their settings and events from real-world history. Innocence incorporates more of these elements in the story, while in Requiem the real-world elements become generalized as the story moves further towards the fantastical and supernatural. By the end of Requiem, entire segments like the Egg Nest and the city of Marseille transform into surreal landscapes right out of H.R. Giger's Necronomicon. But despite their uneven approach to real-world history, both games are based on actual events and locations. So let's examine first the events. Number 1. The Black Death This is the main setting of the game. I mean, it's in the title, Playtale. It refers to the deadliest pandemic in human history. It occurred between 1346 and 1353 and killed up to 200 million people in Asia, Europe and Africa. In Europe it killed something like 30 to 60 percent of the population and caused a huge economic and societal collapse. In the games the plague is represented by the endless swarm of infected rats. They can kill and strip a human being of its flesh in seconds and they can also build massive nests from the corpses of their victims. They can also form rat tornadoes or massive swarms that can literally flood an area and have a collective memory and intelligence. There's also the concept of the Prima Macula, the ancient blood curse that allows its carrier to form a supernatural bond with the infected rats. I hope that it's pretty obvious that this representation of the plague is clearly symbolic and fantastical. Although the black rat is often associated with the plague, technically it was the fleas infesting them that were responsible for the disease transmission to humans. Because of the filth, these things were everywhere in medieval towns and villages, and it wasn't unusual for them to feed on decaying corpses. However, there's no historical evidence of swarms of rats attacking humans during the Black Death. But uh, what about the plague's impact on the population? When Amicia and Hugo go through the village at the beginning of Innocence, it mostly appears abandoned. When they get to the village square, they stumble upon a mob burning people at the stake. The villagers see them and they immediately accuse them of bringing the plague. This is not far off from what actually happened. The plague hit most places so severely they lost more than half of their population. Also, it was common to blame and attack outsiders, usually travelers or the local Jewish population, as the ones bringing the plague with them. On the alchemist Laurentius and on a lot of the dead bodies, we see the symptoms of the plague up close. These symptoms correspond to the swollen lymph nodes or buboes you would see on a plague victim. They can appear on the neck and face and all over the body, but uh, they are more commonly found around the groin or bubonic area, hence the name buboes and bubonic plague. In the segment where Amicia is trying to get to the university, we see the city being evacuated. 
This did not happen at least in an organized manner as we see it here, although there were cases where the nobility and upper class citizens would leave the city for the countryside. We also have mentions of martial law and in Requiem we even encounter soldiers with orders to kill people infected with the plague. Although restrictions on commerce and gatherings were imposed in some cities and the infected were occasionally isolated in plague houses, nothing that we would recognize as martial law was ever enforced on people during the Black Death. Also, there was never a case where the local authorities ordered troops to kill the infected. Perhaps the most shocking images in the games involve the treatment of the dying and the dead. When we enter the cemetery in Innocence, we see large mass graves and corpses left all over the place. This was a reality for cities like Avignon, which had something like 400 or 500 people dying every day. So mass graves and piles of bodies waiting to get buried next to them would be a common sight. Also at the beginning of Requiem we see city areas where corpses are left in stacks on the street, inside houses and almost on every corner. Again, that did actually happen when the death toll was so high that there weren't enough people to bury the dead and as a result the bodies were left to rot where they died. We also see a large stack of bodies being burned near the port, a practice that was not recorded in the 14th century plague. But we do have records about plague infected bodies being burned during the plague of London, so it's not entirely improbable that this also took place during the Black Death. Overall, I would say that when it comes to depicting the plague's impact on the population, while they did miss some of the details, the games are not that far from what actually happened. Number 2. The Inquisition I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Well, I had to make that joke. I mean, it's mandatory at this point. In Innocence, the Inquisition serves as the primary antagonist, uh, aside from the rats, of course. So how close is the game's Inquisition to the actual medieval Inquisition of the 14th century? At the beginning of the game, we see the Derun estate being invaded by Lord Nicholas and troops that were the symbol of the Inquisition. They proceed to murder everyone, including Amicia's father, who is a member of the local nobility. Also, the game depicts a city being evacuated and being effectively under the control of the Inquisition forces. We learn that Lord Nicholas is the commander of the Inquisition and that its leader is Grand Inquisitor Palpatine Vitalis, who wants Hugo so he can cure himself of the plague and gain control over the plague-infected rats. They even have a vast bastion as their base, which enables them to perform alchemical experiments on human subjects. All this, of course, has very, very little to do with the medieval Inquisition or even the later Spanish and Roman Inquisitions. The medieval Inquisition was formed in the late 12th century to stop heretical sects like the Cathars in France. They were Dominican monks that answered directly to the Pope and they didn't have any Grand Inquisitor to rule over them. This title was established by the Spanish Inquisition more than 200 years later. They also didn't have a large army at their command, unique standards and symbols or a fixed base of operation. They traveled with a small entourage of scribes and assistants. They would go to a town where there was a report of heresy and they would first offer an Edict of Grace which was 30 days for people to voluntarily confess their heretical beliefs. After the grace period ended, they would interview witnesses, gather evidence and interrogate accused individuals. Torture was used rarely and only if the accused didn't cooperate. Then the accused would be put on trial and if they were found guilty, they would be punished by having to perform public penance or pay a fine. Sometimes the punishment was imprisonment or execution, but this was done by the secular authorities, not the Inquisitor. And basically, that's it. That is what the medieval Inquisition was all about. Also, the Inquisitor wouldn't be allowed to continue their work or receive the support of his subordinates if they would get excommunicated by the Pope. So when it comes to the depiction of the Inquisition, the game goes way off the historically accurate path. Number 3. The Hundred Years' War this is another main historical point about the setting of Innocence and Requiem. The Hundred Years' War took place between England and France from 1337 to 1453 over a span of 116 years. It ended with France taking all the English-controlled territory and solidifying the power of the French monarchy. In Innocence, the war appears in the form of the battlefield where Amicia and Hugo have to cross to get to the castle and when they get captured by the English troops. 
The battlefield is filled with thousands of corpses of French and English soldiers and it looks more or less like uh, what the aftermath of a major medieval battle would look like. But uh, which battle is this? Well, this is supposed to be Aquitaine, so were there any major battles around this area? Yeah, mainly the Battle of Poitiers and the Battle of Castillon, which ended the rule of the English in Aquitaine. But remember, the game takes place in 1348, and both of these battles happened long after that. On the battlefield there's also siege equipment, and there is a clear view of the castle in the distance, so this was probably a siege battle. But again, the last major siege in Aquitaine, the Siege of Aiguillon, happened in 1346, two years before the events of Innocence. Also, after crossing the battlefield, Amici and Hugo end up prisoners in an English military camp. But here's the thing, unlike the Romans who built fortresses for their legions, medieval armies did not build permanent encampments. They usually stayed in allied castles or fortified towns, which by the 14th century were stone-built, and use mobile encampments when they were on campaign. The encampment in the game with its high wooden walls and towers looks more like a Roman castrum than a medieval bivouac. In any case, the closest English military campaign was that of Crecy, which ended with the Battle of Calais in 1347. So if there wasn't an English campaign happening during the events of the game, then how can we have this huge English encampment and recent remains of a massive battle here? Well. There wasn't a battle and there could not be a battle here. In fact, it would take another two years before any battle of significance was fought in France and that is because we are in the middle of the Black Death. Remember that little detail? You know, the deadliest plague in history wrecking havoc and killing half of Europe's population. The funny thing is they actually mention it in the game. Rats have decimated Valois villages. Thousands of deaths have been reported from bites or contagion. It is a divine plague. And this is just the beginning. There's no room for a war in this. King Edward must order a retreat. Yeah, no shit. Obviously, the last thing that England and France wanted to do at this point in time was to go on resource-hungry war campaigns and fight battles with thousands of casualties. So, although the remains of the battlefield were more or less close to the real thing, the depiction of the English encampment is not that accurate and in any case everything is chronologically off by two to three years from the actual real-world events. Number four, alchemy. For the last part, we have alchemy. It features a lot in both Innocence and Requiem. Beatrice, Hugo's and Amicia's mother, is an alchemist. Lucas is an alchemist's apprentice. The Saguin is in Tinera. The book that contains the elixir that can slow down Hugo's affliction is an alchemical book. Vitalis has a massive alchemy laboratory and an army of alchemists working on his experiments on Hugo and the plague rats. Also in Requiem, we also have the constant presence of the Order, an ancient organization that has been researching the plague and the Prima Macula since the time of Justinian. Although alchemists usually had to work in secrecy for fear of being called heretics, it's unlikely that there were any vast powerful secret alchemy orders operating for centuries. They didn't even have schools of alchemy. Alchemists worked as individuals and at best might have followed some tradition based on the works of Albertus Magnus. Also, I hope I don't need to explain further that a high-ranking official of the church having an industrial-sized alchemy laboratory where human experiments are conducted en masse was not a thing that actually happened. So when it comes to real-world historical events, the games are kind of a mix between accurate information, narrative and game design conveniences, and false popular culture stereotypes, with the best researched element being the effects of the Black Plague. What remains is to examine the two games' locations and structures. Will these hold up better? We'll find out in the second video of the series. Thank you for watching. I'm not sure if the next video I'll make is going to be on the second installment of the Plague Tale series or something completely different. We'll see how it goes. My channel focuses on history in video games. So please subscribe because where else could you learn that the name Marcus Lucinius Crassus, mentioned in Boone's wife Bill of Sale in Fallout New Vegas, 
is a reference to a famous greedy Roman consul who met his end by being forced to drink molten gold and that his death inspired Carl Drago's execution of Viserys in Game of Thrones. Well, here, that is where you are going to learn this stuff. You can also check my previous videos and my archaeological reconstructions in VR project and you can also support me on Patreon so I can make more of these videos. I put the links on the screen. And for now, Ave Atque Valer.